Hi, how are you today? You now come to a podcast on financial analysis. It's really impossible, in my opinion, to have an effective strategic analysis unless you have some finance in there as well. And when we're looking at a firm's performance, we want to have two dimensions to it, the temporal and the relative. Here's any firm, and here's its performance this year. We want to take a look back and see how it has performed over the past two years. Has it been getting stronger or getting weaker? We also want to look and see how it has performed relative to its peers, that is similarly structured companies. And we also want to know where it stacks up in the industry. Is it a leader or is it a follower? And finally, and most importantly, we want to make a forecast of what its financial performance should be over the next two years. Whatever measures we use, they should have these characteristics. They should be generic, simple, timeless, and of course, accurate. And where have you heard that before? In the strategy compass. So I now want to just remind you of the strategy compass and introduce two more. Here's the strategy compass with which you should now be familiar. It's CAM, the letter standing for competitive position, asset utilization, leadership, and markets addressed. We now have it have it joined by the financial companies, CRIB, cash flow, ratio analysis, income statement, and balance sheet. And finally, we have that compass joined by Paul, P-A-L-L, profitability, activity, liquidity, and leverage. Here is the financial compass. I'm not going to spend much time on this because I assume that you'll have done it in other courses, but I will spend a little more time, or quite a lot more time, actually, on ratio analysis. The data which uh, I will will use to illustrate these uh, different concepts comes from the American company Home Depot. And here's their income statement over the period 2007 up to 2009. And you can see that rather expectedly, uh, because of the recession, nearly all the measures are down. Uh, The balance sheet is divided into two bits because of uh, space. Here is, how the, here is how the assets have behaved, down, and here is how the liabilities and shareholders' uh, equity have behaved, again down, as you would expect. And finally, we have the cash flow statements, and once again, things negative. Let's think about it for a moment why we use ratios. Well, if someone were to say, which is the wealthiest country in the the world? You might reply, it's actually the United States. But, But is that true? If we look at the gross domestic product of the United States, it absolutely swamps that of Luxembourg, for example. But when we divide the gross domestic product by the population, that is the gross domestic product per person. Luxembourg, as you can see, absolutely swamps the United States. It's round about twice. So if we do it per head of the population, uh, Luxembourg is much richer than the United States. And that's why we use ratios for financial analysis to enable us to compare firms temporally, how they have behaved over a period of time, and also relatively how they have performed in relation to peers and the industry. Here is the ratio compass, P-A-L-L. I'll just make it a little bit more explicit and put in the actual ratios where those are the profitability ratios we will look at. And secondly, the activity ratios. Thirdly, the liquidity ratios. And finally, the leverage ratios. And what we will do now is to have a look at Home Depot and see how the ratio, those ratios have changed over the period of the case, that is 2007 to 2009. Here are the profitability ratios, which you saw on the other sheet. I have just laid them out here, and I've given the general formula for them here, taking return on equity as net income over shareholders' equity. And then I have done it for Home Depot, where we see 
each of those ratios and how they have changed over that period of time. I don't want to make any comment on these ratios. I don't think that's right. But you can make your own inferences on how Home Depot is performing. How profitable has Home Depot been? The next set of ratios are the activity ratios. And here they are. Here they are in general terms. And here they are in relation to Home Depot. <coughs> Once again, you can make your own inferences there about how that firm has performed. Next we have the liquidity ratios. We have two, the current ratio and the quick ratio. Here they are in general terms. And here they are in relation to Home Depot. And finally, we have the uh, leverage ratios. I hope it's finally. Uh, debt times interest earned and so on. Here they are in general terms. And here they are in relation to Home Depot. Once again, you can make your own inferences. That brings us to the end of this podcast. As usual, most of the credits are due to Apple. And it just reminds me to tell you how you can buy the book which supports this. There's two methods. You can go to the address and type that in. Or you can paste this link into your browser. Once again, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And goodbye. Thank you.